So this Tobacco University video is going to be looking at some physical barriers when it comes to weed suppression. Let's get into using physical barriers to manage weeds in a cannabis field. So often this is cost prohibitive on a large scale. Why? Well, it does create a great look to the field, it does create a very clean field. Um, it does require a lot of material. Uh, it's best suited for smaller and closer in row spacing fields. Not only do you need the material, but you also need kind of ways to kind of hold it down so the wind doesn't blow and carry it away. So these needs to be tucked in by bearing the edges. Here we're seeing a bunch of uh, stone weights or cinder blocks or pellets. Um, all those need to be established well so that you're not damaging the plants if the wind was to kind of shift or move that. But it does, once established, create a very clean field and really eliminates any chance of weeds popping up. Uh, in this clean field that I've talked about, uh, if a physical barrier is used for the plantings of rows, it's also the walking path can be essentially created to a clean field that will reduce the soil splash and possibly uh, reduce disease as well. Again, it needs to be established and needs to be held in place very well. Um, so you're not having giant holes, so you're limiting areas where potential for weeds can grow, but this also reduces any soil splash in your walking rows as well. Really helps keep your plants very clean. Uh, for high traffic areas, if your field has a high traffic, using a physical barrier creates a carpet-like effect to reduce the chance of workers carrying soil particles from one area to another. And this can help reduce the transfer of soil-based diseases, uh, which can be of concern, particularly on larger growing applications. Here we see uh, typically garden mums are grown in this way, and they're grown in containers. So this doesn't necessarily mean when using a physical barrier, the plants have to be physically planted in the soil. They can be used with container growing as well. Also makes it really easy to move the plants um, throughout and to take them and load them up or move them from one field to another. So again, does offer some benefits, but keep in mind that initial establishment and upfront cost can be drawbacks. Lastly, the timing of the physical barrier is also very important. Uh, at the time of planting, the physical barrier should be applied at that time. This can be a challenge as it's when typically growers are the most busy, and this will help increase the effectiveness and reduce the frustrations preventing it from shifting during the season. A lot of times growers want to just plant all their plants and then go back later and add their physical barrier. Sometimes even the best intentions don't really get fulfilled. Also, if you're planting a large-scale planting and your initial plants are growing, it can make it very difficult to go through and kind of re-add that uh, barrier almost as we see here. Here when the plants were small, if everything's tucked in and established, as those plants now grow and get larger, they're taking full advantage of that use of the physical barrier. Keep in mind when looking at your physical barrier, they can last for different periods of time. Uh, some are more porous than others, so take this into consideration as well when you're, if you're selecting a physical barrier, which one is the best fit for your application.